In 793 AD, a warhorn shattered the dawn silence, marking the start of the Viking Age. While their axes brought fear, the Vikings were also skilled traders and craftsmen, connecting Europe to distant lands like Baghdad and Newfoundland. They didn't just raid, they founded cities, established kingdoms and reshaped medieval Europe. But who were these legendary seafarers? Our story begins over 10,000 years ago, as massive ice sheets retreated, revealing a vast and untamed landscape. Into this newly exposed frontier came Mesolithic hunter-gatherers, the earliest inhabitants of Scandinavia. Their survival relied on skills perfectly suited to the harsh northern environment, fishing, hunting and gathering. DNA evidence connects them to paternal lineage haplogroup Psi2 and maternal lineage haplogroup U5, genetic traces that still persist in small groups across modern Scandinavia. These early peoples had darker complexions, an adaptation to the cold climate, and their arrival marked the start of a unique genetic legacy. Over thousands of years, they merged with incoming groups, blending their DNA into the rich genetic heritage that defines Scandinavia today. Around 4,300 BC, a transformative moment unfolded. Anatolian farmers arrived, bringing with them the revolutionary practice of agriculture. This innovation reshaped local lifestyles, introducing farming, domesticated animals, pottery and weaving, skills that would define a new era. Their arrival also brought new genetic markers such as paternal lineage haplogroup G2A and maternal lineage haplogroup T2, which gradually merged with the existing indigenous genome. Alongside these advancements came a significant adaptation, lighter skin. In the dimly lit conditions of Northern Europe, this trait offered an evolutionary edge, improving the body's ability to synthesize vitamin D a critical factor for survival in a sun-starved environment. The integration of these Anatolian farmers with the local Mesolithic communities marked a turning point in Scandinavia's identity. Yet, the region's most profound transformation still lay ahead. Around 2800 BC, groups with steppe ancestry tied to the corded ware culture reached Scandinavia. Their roots traced back to the Yammaya of the Pontic Caspian steppe, bringing new burial customs, advancements in metalworking, and the expanded use of domesticated horses. Genetic research shows they carried paternal haplogroups R1a and some R1b alongside maternal lines U4 and U5. Notably taller than the populations they encountered, these groups' robust lifestyle and protein-rich diet reflected their steppe heritage. They also contributed to the growing prevalence of blonde hair and blue eyes, traits shaped by natural and sexual selection. Over generations, these features along with their height, became iconic symbols of Scandinavia's identity. By the Nordic Bronze Age, Scandinavia thrived. Trade routes connected the region to far-off parts of Europe, bringing wealth and fresh ideas. Its genetic makeup combined Mesolithic, Neolithic, and steppe ancestry. Physically, people increasingly resembled the modern Scandinavian type, fair skin, light hair and blue eyes. In the Iron Age, 
Scandinavia saw the rise of tribal structures and early Norse cultural traits. While Europe faced turmoil during the migration period, Scandinavia's isolation preserved its genetic and cultural identity. Improved protein-rich diets and favorable genetics led to a noticeable increase in average height. By the 8th century, Scandinavia was culturally and technologically ready for the Viking Age. From the late 8th to the 11th century, Scandinavian ships travelled extensively, leaving lasting genetic and cultural impacts. Genome-wide studies show that Norwegian Vikings primarily travelled west, reaching Ireland, Iceland and Greenland between the 8th and 11th centuries. In Ireland, they founded key towns like Dublin. In Iceland, they established one of the earliest parliaments. Reaching Greenland around 985 AD, they paved the way for transatlantic exploration. Danish Vikings had a significant impact on England and Normandy during the Viking Age. They invaded and settled in parts of England, establishing the Danelaw, a region under Viking control. Cities like York flourished as major Viking hubs. In Normandy, their leader, Rollo, secured a treaty with the French king in 911, creating a Viking-ruled region that would later shape European history, including the Norman conquest of England in 1066. Swedish Vikings expanded eastward into the Baltics and Russia, playing a vital role in shaping early trade and political networks. They traveled along rivers like the Volga and Dnieper, reaching as far as the Byzantine Empire and the Caspian Sea. Known as the Varangians, they established key trade routes and settlements, including Novgorod and Kiev, which became central to the formation of Kievan Rus. Their influence extended through commerce, cultural exchange, and even service as elite guards in Constantinople. In Constantinople, a Norseman named Halfdan carved runic inscriptions into the walls of Hagia Sophia, marking the Viking presence in the capital of the Byzantine Empire. Their journeys reached North America, the Middle East, and Central Asia, spreading Scandinavian influence. Modern DNA analyses reveal surprising diversity among Vikings. Many were ethnically Scandinavian, but others had genetic ties to Southern Europe and Asia, reflecting long-standing migrations and interactions. Interestingly, some buried with Viking customs were locals adopting Norse traditions, showing Viking identity was as much cultural as genetic. Medieval accounts often describe Vikings as towering and powerful figures. One famous observation comes from the Arab traveler Ahmad ibn Fadlan, who journeyed along the Volga River in 921 AD. Upon meeting the Rus, a Norse trading and raiding group, he wrote, I have never seen more perfect physical specimens, tall as date palms, blonde and ruddy. Frankish chroniclers similarly described Vikings as men of remarkable stature and striking appearance, such accounts fueled the enduring image of Vikings as physically imposing. However, archaeological evidence offers a more realistic view. From Viking-era graves, skeletal remains reveal a compelling fact. On average, Viking men measured around 172 centimeters, while Viking women stood roughly 159 centimeters tall. Though not extraordinarily tall, they were slightly taller than many of their European contemporaries. This height advantage likely came from a protein-rich diet of fish, 
meat and dairy, active lifestyles, and a cultural emphasis on physical strength. In the centuries that followed, Scandinavians experienced improved living conditions, including better nutrition and health care, leading to increased average heights. Today, Scandinavian men often surpass 180 centimetres, ranking them among the tallest populations on Earth. The prevalence of light hair and blue eyes among Vikings is linked to genetic adaptations to northern climates, where reduced melanin aided vitamin D synthesis. Ancient DNA studies show blonde hair mutations emerged over 10,000 years ago with higher frequencies in Northern Europe. Blue eyes, influenced by OCA2 and HERC2 gene variants, followed a similar pattern. However, not all Vikings were blonde and blue-eyed. These features may have been favoured through sexual selection as they were seen as strikingly attractive in some populations. Norse mythology, with deities like Freya depicted as fair-haired, may have further idealised these traits. The Vikings were not just raiders, they were innovators, explorers and storytellers who left a lasting impact on global history. Their story is deeply intertwined with our shared heritage. If you enjoyed this journey through Scandinavian history, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. History becomes even more fascinating when we explore it together.